Thank you very much, Gemma, uh, your Royal Highness, uh, and thank you so much for your passion. Uh, Gavorg, thank you very much for the invite. Uh, this is a really super summit, and it's obviously this is the first summit, but I can see already it's going to last for many years because it's answering important questions that we need to address and also highlighting the hard questions that we need to pose. Uh, what I'd like to do is really, first of all, take you back uh, to a, a bad time in Northern Ireland, a time of conflict and also a time, unfortunately, of, of poor cancer care. And um, so if you go back to Northern Ireland in the 1990s, we were still in the middle of what we call the troubles of the armed conflict in Northern Ireland. But we also had significant challenges in relation to health and particularly in relation to cancer. Our services were fragmented. Uh, we had a wide variation in treatment provision. I just give one example there for breast cancer. You can see in the slides. Uh, two thirds of breast cancer surgeons were performing less than 10 operations per year. What that means really was they were not competent to do breast cancer surgery. Uh, we had no significant clinical trial activity. And unfortunately, we had the poorest outcomes for the majority of cancers in the UK. So Northern Ireland was not a good place to be if you got cancer. Thankfully, we had some vision and some visionaries, uh, two of whom I'm going to talk about, who really changed the situation. The chief medical officer at a Campbell at the time decided we needed to do something about this. And she commissioned a report called Cancer Services. Um, and what it showed was that it needed to be a comprehensive and coordinated partnership approach to really achieve much improved outcomes for cancer patients. Uh, four things were done, an overarching cancer center framework, a research active national cancer registry was reinvigorated with some investment, a robust cancer screening services were put into place. And also importantly, it was recognized that research had to be part of this agenda. It couldn't be just the cancer care, you needed the research to inform both clinical application, but also to drive innovation. The second thing that happened, uh, obviously in 1998, and we're celebrating 25 years of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, which obviously brought an end to the conflict in Northern Ireland, but as part of that, and if you like, as a peace dividend of the peace process on the Good Friday Agreement, a memorandum of understanding was signed between Ireland, Northern Ireland and the US National Cancer Institute, leading to the formation of a cancer consortium, which focused on enhancing cancer research, but also cancer control. And this was led by Paddy Johnson, um, who had worked at the National Cancer Institute and saw the opportunity here to really work on the island of Ireland, because as we know, cancer knows no borders. So therefore, why should we? And so very much looking at ways in which we could work together on the island uh, to develop a cancer research and control program that really would enhance both uh, outcomes for patients, but also would enhance the research environment. And uh, one of the first outputs of this was an all island cancer atlas. So in order to do something, first of all, you need to know what the problem was. So uh, the two cancer registries came together and produced a cancer atlas, uh, which allowed you to see what were the issues, what were the challenges. What was the result of this? It transformed care in Northern Ireland, enhanced screening and the consolidation of breast cancer services. I'm just going to use breast as an example, a decrease in cancer mortality by nearly 30% by 2006, almost unheard of in that time frame but showing what can be done. And by 2013, Northern Ireland had the highest survival for breast cancer in the United Kingdom. So we'd really made a huge difference by looking at ways in which we could exploit the health dividend of peace. Uh, we looked in 2000 at what the impact had been of this partnership. And we found that it had doubled collaborative research. So it was very much a capacity building exercise. It also produced better quality research. But in critically important, there had been really little or no cancer clinical trial activity beforehand. 30,000 patients put on clinical trials. Um, and so a real lifesaver and also improving the quality of life. It delivered significant additionality. It promoted transnational cooperation. It looked at ways in which enhanced cancer research activity could then underpin improved cancer services and better cancer outcomes. Um, and we've renewed this agreement back in 2021. 
Uh, this is just showing the leadership of the National Cancer Institute, who we visited on the 9th of March, uh, 2020, and um, to look to see, you know, will they were they willing to continue this uh, agreement and continue this partnership? Because the partnership was really leading leading to uh, significant dividends for the island of Ireland, for both Northern Ireland and uh, the Republic of Ireland. So if we looked at it, we've just looked recently and published this, uh, just uh, an, an update in terms of the analysis. What you can see is we're doing more together, but what's most important is we're doing it better in, together. We developed a quality index to show that not only are we doing more things with each other, but we're actually improving the quality of what we're doing together. The second thing that was really important, this was work that myself and Richard Sullivan had done together to really measure, to get the metric in terms of what was happening. And um, the other thing that's really important, and this is what something that we developed through the European Cancer Ground Shot, uh, the Lancet Oncology Commission, was to show that research is very much an integral part of modern cancer care. So research is a necessity, not a luxury. And we showed that this was really reimagining how you could work together, how you could drive a, a transatlantic partnership, how we could work together, how we could benefit both sides. So the National Cancer Institute, the US also benefit from this collaboration, uh, which was really important. And the other thing we've done is we've developed a training program, so a doctoral training program with the National Cancer Institute. We had a symposium uh, earlier this year, and you can see there on the right hand side, these great uh, students who we've sent to the NCI. And the NCI are so happy with these students, they're saying, send us more. We want more people from the island of Ireland because they're actually so enthusiastic, they're uh, very uh, eager to learn and they're excellent uh, researchers and that's been a great program the program has been so good we're now going to extend it to an all-island program um, and the other thing was we had a lot of political engagement so here's the deputy prime minister of ireland Mike Michael martin who by the way was the person who introduced the smoking ban on the uh, uh, in ireland uh, which obviously was a huge public health um, drive. Uh, but again, emphasizing that cancer really knows no borders and how we can work together is critical to how we move forward. Just want to show you now what we've, if you like, developed from this and show you a very short video to really emphasize, one, that cancer has no borders, but most importantly, that working together is the way in which we can achieve improved outcomes for our patients. So we've gone from a situation where I showed you where two thirds of breast cancer surgeons weren't competent in terms of performing breast cancer operations to a scenario now where we're actually leading in relation to how we work together on the global stage. And one of the things we've emphasized is that we really want to drive a 10 year program because one of the challenges that we all face is that continuity is not part of how we think and not part of how governments think. And we need to change that. We need to change it so that actually continuity is an integral part of how we deliver cancer research and cancer care. Uh, and whether that be in a discovery science approach, which is if we like our first theme. So finding out what we don't know and using that to help us to understand cancer, developing cross-border training programs and also with the National Cancer Institute, uh, but also looking at ways in which we can innovate. Digital health, the use of AI, 
the dr driving of uh, phase one clinical trials, and also looking at ways in which we can drive the knowledge economy. So this is really our vision going forward. Uh, and what we feel is that this can really deliver for us. So one of the things we've done is really brought together the entire community. So all the universities on the island of Ireland, all the hospitals that are treating cancer and looking at ways in which we can work together. And we've been fortunate that our government has responded to this by producing a number of funding programs, one of the which is called the North South Research Program to specifically host North South research uh, initiatives. And interestingly enough, so this is for everything. So this is arts and humanities, physical and engineering, uh, plus health and life sciences. And essentially, the statement of intent has been that one third of the overall funding has been given to cancer research and its impl implementation. So we feel this is a really important and it probably reflects the fact that we've been preparing for this, bringing the community together, looking at ways in which we can work together. So. Ireland and Northern Ireland are small places. I, I, I'm a mad soccer supporter. This is Jerry Armstrong scoring the goal against Spain in the 1982 World Cup. Uh, that, so Ireland beat the hosts in the World Cup. And this is the Irish rugby team uh, having defeated the uh, New Zealand All Blacks uh, down in New Zealand. I was hoping to show it with Ireland winning the World Cup in rugby, but unfortunately I can't do that. But what is really important is working together, even if you are small, even if you start from very humble beginnings, that beginnings in terms of having the worst outcomes in the UK, in Northern Ireland for all cancers, we can do it. It is possible to change things. And it's possible to change things within a generation. Um, and at least we rest on our laurels. Uh, I'm chair of the International Cancer Benchmarking Partnership. And one of the things we did was looked at trying to link consistency of cancer policy um, with outcomes for uh, different cancers. We looked at seven different cancers and we developed, if you like, a policy scorecard. Unfortunately, when we look at that policy scorecard here today in 2023, we see that Northern Ireland is at the bottom of that list. Why is Northern Ireland at the bottom of that list? Because we haven't implemented a cancer strategy in over 20 years. So we did great at the start, it implemented on, but if we don't keep on doing it, and that's why continuity is so important. It is not enough to do something, have one intervention and then say, oh, cancer is sorted. Unfortunately, that's what we've done, not only in Northern Ireland, but in the United Kingdom. Imagine a country that says, like England says, that we don't need a cancer plan, that we can actually have a major diseases plan. Whoever thought of that? But that's what we have. That's the reality of what we have in the UK at the moment. So we need to change that. And interestingly, if you look at the data from the International Cancer Benchmarking Partnership, Denmark was down with the UK near the bottom of the league table in relation to cancer outcomes. If you look at this in relation to consistency of cancer policies, Denmark did something about it, said we need to change things. This is not good enough. This is not good enough for our citizens. And look, they're now on, now on top of the pile. So we need to do with Denmark in the European context, but it's really important, and particularly from the last speakers, we need to do the same type of thing in Africa and South America. We need to work together. Cancer knows no borders. We need to deliver. And Paddy Johnson, who was my friend, my colleague, and my mentor, he had that vision in terms of how we could change things on the island of Ireland, and we did change things. So everything is possible. So dream, no small dreams for they have no power to move the hearts of men or women. Think big, deliver. <laughs>